The following podcast contains weird topics, nerdgasmic imagery, the occasional swear word, and a lot of booze. By God, that's a lot of booze. Listener discretion is advised. Mic check! Testing, one, two, testicles, one, two. Well, I meant to say, how are you, Mike? Oh. Oh, that's right. I'm Mike Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the music. Welcome, listeners, to Bourbon on Ice. Where we talk about everything nerdy. Like gentlemen. Join us every week for our local Cape Cod take on, well, everything. Laugh, cry, be confused, and laugh some more. I'm your friend Frosty. And I'm your bartender, Mike Whiskey. Stay tuned. You think they'll like the episode? Oh, they'll definitely love it. So my hair color today is blonde. (laughs) (laughs) That's an insult to blondes everywhere. Go back to being brunette. In my case, I'm simply dark. Huh. That actually works very well. Dark Frosty. That's just chocolate frosty, remember? <laughs> you told that joke. I, I nearly cried I, back then. Now it just makes me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Bourbon on Ice. I am your friend, Frosty. And I'm your ditzy bl- bartender, Mike Whiskey. And this is that show where we discuss all things nerdy, like, like gentlemen. gentlemen. Okay. We're, what What are we talking about today? Today, I... <laughs> I have something for you that I, I mentioned several episodes ago. I'm just like, I'm going to spring this on them. Uh-oh. Yes. Oh, no. I'm going to spring this on them because of... I don't I don't remember. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but first, we will fun for... So, how's the weather been? Snowy. Yes, yes, it has. By the way, I almost tripped coming into this house. What is your hatred of salt? Oh, we just haven't really needed to... We've just been... Walking normally. Am I your freaking litmus paper? Like, <laughs> has Frosty tripped coming into the house, specifically up the stairs? If so, then it's time for the rock salt. <laughs> no, it's just nobody's needed the salt going up. We're sure footed. I'm so happy for all of you. <laughs> you, Migs, Elder Nerd, you're all fleet footed. Very elven of us, I know. Yes, you run on the snow and your feet don't leave any. Marks. At <laughs> any rate. Uh, whiskey? Yes, Frosty. Oh, you're not ready for this. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm very happy about this. My my saying is, um, to be prepared for anything, you must first be prepared for nothing. I don't think anything can prepare you for me. <laughs> this is true. I threw that out the window the day I met you. My boss always used to say, expect the unexpected, and we would look at him and say, gee, thanks, ass. <laughs> like, wow, that's that's helpful advice. Expect the unexpected. That really fills us with a sense of can-do attitude. That's like motherly advice that comes too late. Like, you run running through the house and you slam into the table. No running in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I would be terrible as Don't a father. Don't do that, it hurts. <laughs> I mean, I would just... I would create environments for my children to crush themselves. At which point I then swoop in and rescue them from said misery and say, this is why you should come to me first. Wow, you massive (laughs) gaslighter. (laughs) I prefer to think of myself as evil. There we go. Just pure evil. The the kid says, you know, like, oh, I I want to do this. And I say, okay. I then think of all the ways to make this impossible and, and spend my day creating those things, and then just sit back and wait with a cup of tea, and I hear, like, explosions and and, and sobbing, and I finally come in and say, oh, did it not work out? There, there. If you'd come to me, I would have told you how to do this right. So? Yes, I am Satan. No. So, Carol. (laughs) How? How dare you? How very fucking dare you? I walked into that, but again, how dare you? Oh, oh my god. I knew, I had to say something that I knew would hurt. It did, it did. It, from the bowels of the soul. Okay, so, uh, whiskey? Yes. On this installment of the Cape Cod Nerd Word, Word, I have to ask you, 
what do you know about infinite regress arguments? I actually know quite a lot. It's turtles all the way down. And now I'm at a loss for words. What? So, there was an old myth, I think it might be aboriginal, that the world is a disc on the back of four elephants, which stands on the top of the turtle. Who, who, who stands on the top of the turtle? This is the setup for Discord, by the way. Ter Terry Pratchett stole it, by the way. He was very blatant about stealing it, by the way. Anyways, tell us how you really feel. No, I love Terry Pratchett. He's awesome. Oh my gosh. Anyways, what does the turtle stand on? Well, obviously another turtle. Well, what does that turtle stand on? Well, well obviously another, another turtle. turtle. It's turtles all the way down. <laughs> This is the same as, like, like there must have been something more powerful than God who created God. Well, that must... Well, that, we'll call that person God. Isn't there something that would have created that God? Based on the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, an infinite regress argument, and this is from... Uh, this was published on July 20th, 2018. <clears throat> an infinite regress is a series of appropriately related elements with a first member but no last member where each element leads to or generates the next in some sense. An infinite regress argument is an argument that makes appeal to an infinite regress. Usually, such arguments take the form of objections to a theory, with the theory, with the fact that the theory implies an infinite regress being taken to be objectionable. Wow. I, I don't... Wow. A children's show called Dave the Barbarian did this really well. I love Dave the Barbarian! Do you remember... It was on late at night. It Was it? Yeah. Anyways, when um the wizard uncle is like oh my look, gosh, looking in the, the, in the dictionary, he's looking for the word destroy. The definition of the word destroy. See, obliterate. <laughs> obliterate. See, destroy. destroy. <laughs> That's an infinite regression. <laughs> there are two ways in which a theory is resulting in an infinite regress can form an objection to that theory. The regress might reveal a bad feature of the theory, a feature that is not the regress itself, that we have independent reason to think is a reason to reject the theory, or the fact that the theory results in the infinite regress <laughs> might itself be taken to a reason to reject the theory. The former cases are the easier ones, since in those cases we do not have to make a judgment as to whether the regress itself is objectionable. We only need to ask about the feature of the theory that the regress reveals. It's all so clear now! I'm sorry I'm laughing, because my feed just came up with this headline, The Texas Butthole Tickling Bandit Has Finally Been Captured by Police. <laughs> Florida, what are you people doing? This Step up your game. <laughs> Texas is overtaking the table. Texas is trying to run the table here. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're, you're what, a save it. what a headline. You were saving that. We were reading that later. <laughs> so, okay. Let me put this in very, very, very simple terms. You're still looking at the headline, aren't you? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Let me so put funny. this in very simple <laughs> terms. Just made me stop and go, what? hold up a minute. <laughs> An infinite regress is something that basically has no start and has no end because it cannot be pinpointed as to where the start and end are. But people argue that there is a clear start and end. And thus, the argument is that someone knows, but other people are not convinced. Mm. Such as the see obliterate, see destroy, see obliterate, see destroy. Or the person who says, wait a minute, chicken? Or egg, or chicken, or egg, or chicken, or egg, and it'll go on forever while I am stealing the chicken and frying the eggs. Well, you know, I know who, which came first, between the chicken or the egg. This is going to be a sex joke, isn't it? The rooster. Yes. <laughs> I know you too well. Whiskey? Yes? This being said, I have to ask you, have you ever heard of the infinite lasagna paradox? I think I have. <laughs> okay. This was covered by one of my favorite podcasts of all time, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, which covers the biggest food debates and topics of all time. Can pineapple go on pizza? Is a Pop-Tart a ravioli? Are candy and chocolate the same thing? And of course, in June 2020, by mythical kitchen hosts Josh Scherer and Nicole Inaidi, in the episode titled The Lasagna Paradox, The Lasagna Paradox. We will post a link to the episode and the podcast later. You guys need to check this out. But here it is, boiled down in a nutshell. You have been invited to a party. Yes. Yes, because you're such a wonderful person and everyone loves you. But, you know, it's 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 a potluck. 
Oh my stars, whatever shall I make and bring? I know, my award-winning lasagna with the meat and the cheese and the lasagna noodles. It's a game winner. It's a humdinger. It's a home run. Everyone loves it. And so you show up at the party with your lasagna and you walk over to the table, but lo, a challenger approaches. Another lasagna? Another lasagna. There's only enough room for, like, one. And this lasagna, let's just entertain this idea, is almost to a chemical level identical to yours. And the other person's like, oh, let, let's not make a, a thing out of this. Just take your lasagna out of the pan and drop it right on top. And now it's one big lasagna. However, you say, that's not one big lasagna, that's two lasagnas stacked on top of each other. That's my lasagna stacked on top of your lasagna. And they say, oh, but they're the same thing, same ingredients and all that. So basically it's one big lasagna, but you say, no, I should put mine separately because it's a separate lasagna. And they say, just put yours on top of mine to make it one big lasagna. You say, no, they're two separate lasagnas. And the question is, is that two separate lasagnas? If you take it out and put it on top, do you have two lasagnas on top of each other or one big one? And if that's the case, is there a universe where you can have an infinite lasagna simply stacking lasagnas on top of each other with no end in sight and seemingly say it's still all one lasagna. <laughs> this is the debate, which they plucked off the internet, which apparently a lot of people had a lot of feelings on and was ripping apart the fabric of, of society. <laughs> and as I'm sitting here, I'm like, holy crap, people are talking about this and now I'm one of them. <laughs> and I had to weigh in. So, Whiskey, what are your feelings? <laughs> Wait, I can do this. Whiskey, what? Is, <laughs> what is your wisdom? <laughs> I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get the words out here. Whiskey, what are your feelings on the infinite lasagna paradox? <laughs> My feelings are people are getting way too deep in the weeds about this. It's lasagna, man. Just eat it. <laughs> Why are you arguing about stacking lasagna when you could be eating lasagna? I'm going to channel my inner Garfield. <laughs> Just eat the lasagna, man. Is there an infinite lasagna? No, there's two empty pans. There is no <laughs> infinite lasagna. There's only Garfield. <laughs> the infinite stomach of Garfield. So here is here is one of the counters that came to this. Fine. You put two lasagnas on top of each other. And like I said, down to the chemical level, they're exactly the same. And you can make the argument that there is now one big lasagna. Well, I guess the biggest factor is, are you able to separate them into two lasagnas again? Is there a top and a bottom to a lasagna? Theoretically, yes. How? I mean, you could put his on top of yours or yours on top of his. And the bottom of his ceases to exist now because it's just another layer. And... The top of yours is no longer the top, but you still have the bottom, but now his is the top. So if you argue that now they're just one big one, could you still point and say, there's where one ends and the other begins? Because as I said, chemical level, and it's still, you know, cheese, meat, noodles, cheese, meat, noodles. Are they now basically the same thing, just stacked? Or are they still different? Here, Here's something, a, a point someone brought up about this. Can you stack two cookies on top of each other and say now it's one big cookie? No. But they're exactly the same. Like two Oreos. Uh, not, not even Oreo. Like two chocolate chip cookies. If you stack both of them on top of each other and they have the same ingredients, they look exactly the same. They came from one of those store packs. You've done the same thing with two lasagnas. How are the cookies? Not two cookies. And people are arguing, well, there's a top and a bottom. Clearly. And they're two separate entities. But again, people are saying... But that's what we said about the lasagna. So that's like, okay, now my head hurts. Wait, wait, I, I, I've got this. The, the problem inherent in lasagna specifically comes in the nature that is it is a layered dish. So mm -hmm. it has the layer of the pasta, meat, sauce, and cheese. Another layer of pasta, meat, sauce, cheese. Layer of pasta, meat, sauce, cheese. And that delicious cheesy top, it's baked. Yes. <laughs> cheese just bubbling. Elder Nerd and I make a mean lasagna with like four different kinds of cheeses, specialty meats, gluten-free pasta. Oh. It's pretty good pasta. 
Wait, wait, you're not one of those crazy people who puts things like eggplant in there. No. Green pepper. No. Oh. Green, red pepper. Yeah. Onions, garlic, tomato. <laughs> Deliciousness. Meat and cheese, meat and cheese. <laughs> the two food groups. Okay, fine. I'll accept that. But then, wouldn't the same be said of putting two cakes on top of each other? Yes. This is another one. You take two cakes from the store, one that says, Happy Birthday, Ralph, and the other one that says, Happy uh, Divorce, Dolores. <laughs> and someone says, Oh, gosh, we only have room for one cake on this table. Oh, they're both chocolate cakes with chocolate frosting and chocolate devil's food cake. So one has a top to it. Let's just put it on top of the other. But someone will get mad and say, Hey, you just put that one on top of the other cake. You crushed it. You covered the top because there's a clear... Top. So are those still two cakes, or is that one giant cake? And again, could you start taking other cakes and stacking them on top of this to make an infinite cake? Well, you can't make an infinite cake, because eventually you would run out of cakes. <clears throat> yes, that's the issue with this. <laughs> There's the hole in the logic. But So glad you pointed that out. I'm of the opinion that uh, this is very similar to geometry. And a geometrical problem. Yeah, you just get a different shape. It would be, it would turn, it would still be a polygon. It may not be a square anymore. It may now be a rectangle. But it is still a polygon. But and is it still? You are merely adding layers of planes to this object. So you are saying that an infinite cake and thus an infinite lasagna could exist? No. Why not? Because. If, when you reach infinity, <clears throat> your math is wrong. What? Yeah. Anytime you reach an infinity, your math is usually wrong. Okay, I'm going to need you to explain. Hey, Whiskey. What do you see above us? I see the beautiful night sky with stars in the Milky Way. What do you think it all means? Well, I think it means we're going to have another beautiful day tomorrow. And I think it really speaks to our place in the universe, you know? Here we are, specks of dust, riding on another speck of dust, flying at hundreds of millions of miles per hour through space and time, and we get to observe the majesty and glory of the universe and stars above us. Such insignificant beings we are, wholly privileged by time and circumstance to enjoy this moment. Right here. Right now. It's sublime. Why? What do you think it means? I think it means someone stole our tent, you idiot. Alright. No, I, I don't buy it. What do you mean you don't buy it? It's logic. I don't do logic. <laughs> you need to explain it. Okay. So, what do you mean? Th th so there's no such thing as infinity? I mean, theoretically... Speaking, yes, there can be ideas of infinity. But what happens when you get infinities is you're putting logic to the extreme reaches. So, the idea that we can count from 1 to 100. Yeah, we can count to 1 to 100. Oh my gosh, I remember when I was a kid. and Remember when we were children and 100 is considered like... Like the, the, the big, highest number? The, the highest number and anyone then, could count to. And then you find out that there's numbers after 100, like... What do you mean you can get to a thousand? Well, yeah. <laughs> Theoretically, one person could count to a thousand. Theoretically, one person could just keep counting and never end. Except it could never end. But what if it could never end? Well, there's your problem. It must end. All things in this life must end. And so... I'm guessing by the person who's counting, dropping dead of exhaustion. Yeah. <clears throat> Either that or what? For any number of reasons. Ha, ah, see what I did there? No, usually. And this is something that separates uh, Greek geometry and mathematics, the ancient Greek geometry and mathematics, from um, modern day geometry and mathematics. The Greeks. Um, didn't really use zero, nor did they use infinities, because they thought the idea was absurd. Why? I'm being very serious about no, this. No, no, I understand. We've moved beyond, we've moved slightly beyond, uh, lasagna, although I really have a craving now. As do I. No, no, no. When you're counting, 
let's say you're counting apples, what happens when you have zero apples? STARVATION! Yeah, you have other problems than zero apples. You have no apples. You just, just say you don't have any. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. you just have no apples. You don't need a number for that. You have no apples. So they didn't use the concept of zero. They didn't use the concept of zeros. That was Arabian mathematicians who created the concept of zero much later. Likewise, the Greeks didn't really... They understood that zero was a concept. They just thought it was stupid. <laughs> Same with the idea of infinity. When you've reached an infinity, you've done something wrong mathematically, generally speaking. My mother is a master mathematician. I really hope that she is not listening because this will like mess with her. <laughs> on the other hand, on the other hand, you could ask her. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 that's not happening. Oh, it's not because she might have an answer. It's just because, you know, talking to my mother. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to actually speak to a mathematician about this. I was going to say, I, I, I thought you were about to say, I'd love to speak to your mother. Like, you will stay the hell away from that no, no, woman. Just any mathematician will do. I'd love to I don't have need a conversation you, I don't need her this. giving you ammunition against me. <laughs> <laughs> but, again, getting back to this idea of lasagna, let's take it in three specific quantities. Three levels. Meat cheese, sauce, and let's pretend that those are just constants. Michi sauce, michi sauce, michi sauce. Three layers of those three, and that's it. Top and bottom. Like setting up a mathematical equation, there is a beginning, there is an end, but then you add an entire second one to this, put the entire thing in a parentheses, and do the times infinity symbol, and it just becomes a ridiculous equation that can't be set up. But then there will be people who will argue that it doesn't need an equation because it just is. So he, here's here's part of the reason why I'm saying that if you're doing infinity stuff, yeah. your, your math is wrong. As soon as you said that, we've moved beyond mathematics, and we're now talking about... Philosophy! Well, not just philosophy, but we're now talking about... Um, a set, which is an idea in mathematics that um, we have the set of numbers contained by this infinity. So the set of all numbers x, y, and z, the set of all numbers, set of all whole numbers is infinite. The set of all irrational numbers is theoretically infinite. So mathematically, an infinite lasagna does not exist. Yes. Now, here's one other... That is my assertion and I'm willing to be proven wrong. Let us know in the comments section. Email us at Whiskey and Frosty. Tell us if we're completely full of it. And if you have a lasagna recipe. Oh, yes. Because I really, really <laughs> want one right now. Here's one thing that was brought up. Adding cards to a deck of cards. It was brought up that, you know, cards. There's 52 cards. It is 52, right? Yes, it is 52. There's 52 cards in one deck of cards. And... They have their own individual values, suits, and whatnot. And plus those two annoying-ass jokers that everyone throws out of the deck. Yep. Why are those even in there? Because some games use them. Which? I don't know which. <laughs> but I do know they exist. They have a purpose? Yeah. I've always wondered that. I'm not a card person. I am a dice person. <laughs> Speaking of which... I... You are not a dice person. You are a dice goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Just for that, I am coming back in the... Dark of night, dyed green, and holding a large bindle sack and stealing all of the dice in this house. Exactly. That'll show you who's a goblin. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. 52 cards. You take out one card, put it on the top. It's still the same deck. You take out any number of them, shuffle them, and put them back on the, the pile. Still the same deck. You add additional cards to the deck. So now there's more than 52. Would, it's, it's still considered a deck of cards, but not the original deck of cards. But that's okay. You just pull a couple out. But now you won't know, if you just do it blindly, you won't know which ones. Is the deck ruined? Potentially. But is it still the deck of cards? Again, people are like, but, but that's splitting hairs because it's just an object. And again, so is lasagna when you break it down. I Three absolutely things, 52 love cards. that we're having this conversation. So let me tell you a story. Okay, okay. I love stories. Oh, do I have to close my eyes? No, you do not. C can I sit on the floor? If you would like. I don't want to. There's a dog down there. 
But fair enough. Okay, so this was back in the days of Plato. Dun, da, 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 dun, 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 dun. Yes, that's the opening <laughs> theme to Yoshi's Island. <laughs> this was back in the days of Plato. Salminio? No. Never mind. No. Plato. And um, one of Plato's critics, who was... Beheaded. No, I don't think he was beheaded. Hot. No. He lived in a barrel. Wasn't that Archimedes? No. To the internet, away! <laughs> he lived in a bathtub. Tap, 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 tap. No, no, you said barrel. Oh, yeah, he lived in a barrel. Diog- nah. Diogenes. There we there go, we Diogenes. Go. Diogenes the Cynic. Um, cynic. Wait, his name was Diogenes the Cynic? Yes. That is awesome! Well, Cynic meant dog. Uh, d- but, g- because Greeks li- are weird. Yes, they are. Anyways, one famous um, lecture that Plato is giving, he is describing man as a featherless, bipedal animal. And with you so far, go on. And so Diogenes got a great idea. He showed up in his barrel. <laughs> Just picture the naked man with a barrel around him. Oh, I am. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> brings with, he pulls out of this barrel a plucked chicken. A plucked chicken. And said, behold, a man. <laughs> Do you see the problem with this statement? Um, the fact that one is a man and one is a chicken. Yes, I, I see that. What? <laughs> do, do you see that? <laughs> I don't think I can stand. I don't think I can sit. I, I, I feel like I'm going to fall down. This is a true story. That's what makes it even worse. Where can I plug this thing? I'm running right, on right battery then. power. <laughs> oh my gosh. What, how did we get here? <laughs> Send Italian food quickly. <laughs> no, Greek food. <laughs> oh, send me a hero. <laughs> oh, sorry. A gyro. gyro. A gyro. <laughs> no, this is um, this is the problem of qualitative um, versus quantitative language, and the biggest issue is that um, a deck of cards is a qualitative thing, and you are now trying to define it with qual- qu- uh, quantitative means. I think I've lost you. No, I'm trying to catch up. So, instead of saying... Wait, you're, wait, did you say it was quantitative, the deck is quantitative, or it's qualitative? The deck, A deck of cards is a qualitative statement. Yes. So, by changing it from the idea of what it is to defining it by the numerical value within it, then it's... Are you saying it's not the same thing anymore, or it's... You're using two different sets of languages, ultimately, is what I'm saying. So... When I say a deck of cards, you and I both agree that a deck of cards is a stack of individual cards that have been stacked on top of one another. Unless this is Yu-Gi-Oh, in which case it's 40 to a deck. Yeah, but it's still a deck. The deck... You're just going to let me get away with that reference? Yeah. Okay, then. It's a deck. It's cards stacked on top of one another. That's what we call a deck. A deck could be any size, and it would still be a deck. Now we're going to say it's a deck of playing cards. And you and I will both know that it's 52 cards to a deck of playing cards. Yeah. And now it's going to break down because you're going to put in more cards from another deck. The same deck. Mm-hmm. Two of the same that you bought at the same time at the same store. You're going to yep. combine the decks. Yep, yep, yep. It's still a deck. but It's, it's still a deck. It's not a proper legal deck of playing cards. This is where the qualitative versus the quantitative is breaking down. Let's apply this to, to the lasagna argument. We've defined quote-unquote defined lasagna as a three-level, within three-level dish. And putting more of those on top of each other, does that change it? Or is that, as you said, transferring it from qualitative to quantitative? Well, it's doing both at the same time. So it is the same, it is now one lasagna, and it is two lasagnas at the same time that have been stacked on top of each other. It's like the sh- it's like a der- delicious Schrodinger's cat, almost, but not not without the absurd absurdity of um, quantum physics. Mm, roasted cat. <laughs> <laughs> I- I'm sorry, but if you took the box and like seasoned it, yeah, I mean, you, the, you would taste more of the box on the cat, but the, the box would get more seasoning. But yeah. <laughs> so I don't think so. Yeah. You're saying overall. There is no such thing as an infinite lasagna. Yes, there is no such thing as infinite lasagna. 
<laughs> to bring it back to home. <laughs> to bring it back to the ridiculous point that was plucked off the internet that our plucky uh, podcasting uh, counterparts over at uh, Mythical Kitchen, Josh Scherer and Nicole Aniety, brought up. I, I want to give one more example. And I think people will understand what I'm trying to say better. Go for it. Two stuffed animals. Oh. Two stuffed animals. They're exactly the same. Jubilee squeezy. They belong to a child. Or one of them belongs to a child. It's me, isn't it? No, it doesn't have to be. You've seen inside my closet. (laughs) I said child, not man child. (laughs) How dare you? Continue. Um, And sleep with one eye open. (laughs) No. If you try and change out the toy, the stuffed animals, the child will know. And it's because it's not his stuffed animal. Okay. There, there is, and now I'm going to lose a lot of people. There is a soul. There is a essence to the first stuffed animal, which belonged to the child, oh. that is missing from the stuffed animal that we have left to sit in the closet for all time. Are you saying that this all comes down to intent? That blunt and simple, you are defining the top and the bottom of the lasagna, the lasagna as one specific entity, whether or not it's two things, by intent, not by what someone else says. Oh, now there's two of them on? That you say, I see two, they say, I see one giant one. That you're saying that these two toys are different because of the intent of the person who's looking at it. Yes. That makes sense, and I do agree with that. I do completely agree with that. Like, with the cake thing, I would say, like, you know, screw off Dolores and get lost on top of one cake is the top of one cake. And the other cake that says, Ralph, you're the best, congratulations on parole, (laughs) that makes it two cakes because of the intent. Someone baked it with the intent that here's the bottom, here's the top, and putting two on top of each other does not make it one giant cake in the way that two separate people made two separate lasagnas and they've defined at the time of making, this is the top, this is the bottom, and this is the top, and this is the bottom. So in my mind, I don't think there's they're the same thing, even if you put them on top of each other. Yeah. And I mean, if you, if you tried hard enough, <clears throat> you would be able to find a point where you could take your lasagna out and away from the, from the second lasagna and put it back in the original dish. Holy crap. I'm just imagining you being the person at the party who's like watching four lasagna stacked on top of your like, I'm having none of this. And you just pull yours out from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> now, now no one has lasagna. Now no one has lasagna. <laughs> now all we have is a mess. <laughs> and a very angry Italian ancestor. And very angry mathematicians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this paradox. It's it's quite literally delicious. It's not really a paradox. Because <laughs> <laughs> we have solved it. You and I, the hosts of Bourbon on Ice, have solved the lasagna paradox. The answer? Por que no los dos? <laughs> <laughs> Are you tired of boring and uninspired lunches? Done to death with co-workers and schoolmates making fun of you for your simple packaging? Well now you can ditch those mundane paper bags and get the all-new Bourbon on Ice Lunchbox! Made from easy to clean and dishwasher safe stainless steel and built to last, just watch as we run over the Bourbon on Ice Lunchbox with a family minivan! Not even a scratch on it! Featuring two classic scenes from the Bourbon on Ice talk show with your favorite hosts, Frosty and Mike Whiskey, on either side and wrap around in nerdy imagery. The Bourbon on Ice Lunchbox makes a perfect gift. Just listen to one of our satisfied customers. All my construction buddies used to think I was wicked lame bringing the same old paper bag to lunch break all the time. But now that I got the new Bourbon on Ice Lunchbox, I'm the one with the last laugh. And when you call an order, ask about our extra sized lunchbox. That's right, you can get our regular sized and extra large lunchboxes all for the low, low price of $19.99. Call now at 555 Lunchbox. So, we have excited news, Bourbonites, Bur- Bourbonese, Bur- Bourbanians, Bur- uh, l- listeners. Do, do we actually have a name for our listeners? Bourbonites? Crazy people? <laughs> our beloved audience. Fellow noids. Booze-swilling nerds. Um, Rosie. No. 
<laughs> I was going to say because like <laughs> she's in the room right now. There, there's our target audience, the dog. <laughs> uh, and then that one guy in Malaysia. Malaysians. That's our, <laughs> that's our fans. They're Mal- <laughs> yes, we are a big in Malaysia. <laughs> We're big in Spain and Malaysia, and and one in Norway. We are big with the Norwegian people. <laughs> are we? We have one from Norway. Nice. That's great. That is great. They were bored. And found us. <laughs> okay. All right, people. As of today, the Patreon page for Bourbon on Ice is active. Yay! Cheers! C H E E R R Z. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's how you spell it. That's right, we have a Patreon page now. We threatened it and we finally delivered. Are those the words I want to choose? Yes. <laughs> uh, you can find us under Mike Whiskey and your friend Frosty. Uh, of course, there's our email again Whiskey and Frosty at Yahoo.com. And yes, we are real. We are actual people. We're, you know, there. And. We have memberships, which, um, if, if, if you send us money, we'll do the thing. Yes. The, the secret thing. You'll get, you'll get access to the secret handshake. We'll which we are still coming up with. We'll give you a woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do this at work every once in a while. Like, we try to do a, a hand slap, and, and I always screw it up badly because I'm bad <laughs> at these things. I'm, I'm because not... Frosty had no friends growing up. I didn't. I drove most of them away. It, the secret is that there is no secret, and you just go with the flow, man. I still don't get it. No, you, you know what the problem might actually be? You might be overthinking it and being too, too self-conscious. I think it's a, a frosty is stupid thing. A self-conscious thing. A frosty is self-conscious. Thing. It could be that. It yeah. could be very much that. <laughs> because it's just like an instinctual. You, you know it. Bam, 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 done. Or if you want to be really fancy. Ding, 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 boom, boom, bop. What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> All right, people. So, uh, we have three tiers currently. Our first tier is intern. We know we spent many years tormenting hours. So we feel that if you want to join us, then you can start at the low intern level. And you will get a shout out at the end of every single episode. Hooray! Mid-level is, and this is thanks to Whiskey, Dust Bunnies of Emotion. Dust Bunnies of Emotion. (laughs) I think I I started crying when he said that. It was that good. (laughs) With Dust Bunnies of Emotion, you can email us anytime, and we will read your email word for word live on our episodes. This sounds like a bad idea. This does. So please keep it Mostly tasteful. Y- you can swear and you can say... No political manifestos, please. Yes. Nothing that's going to make us think cabin in the woods. Yeah. Don't open your mail. But don't. You, you can be risque, but please don't be vulgar. Yes. This is a... I was, no, I was going to say this is a family show. But... This is a Christian show, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that either. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> I am a simulation theorist. I am... Not entirely sure where I fall on the spectrum. Possibly Madman. (laughs) And our top tier, 65 pound turkeys. (laughs) I remember that story. I do too. How your uncle almost invented world hunger, but (laughs) fell at the the finish line. (laughs) Tripped before getting to the finish. Didn't even get out of the hangar finish. (laughs) Didn't make it over the starting line. Okay. And with that, the rarest, most achievable goal out there. Well, did we, have we told them how much each tier is? No, we're not saying that. We'll oh. have to look online. Okay. The prices will be listed online. Because if we say it now, you know, if everyone if everyone knew that it was $500 for the top tier, they would not contribute. No, it's true. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, top tier, you can send us a topic, and we will dedicate an entire episode to it so long as you give us enough material to work with yeah don't just say like hey talk about music because oh my (laughs) gosh the 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 (laughs) rabbit hole that we could fall down which uh do you want us to talk about a specific genre do you have an article a new uh, again try to stay away from the political we try to keep it a rather apolitical here yes we want you to be able to escape 
from the humdrum of daily life. Don't just say, hey, talk about old video games. Do you have a specific one and a memory of it? Something that you'd like us to mention? We'll be happy to talk about the entire thing. Think of it, people. You could direct our course. Take hold of the helm and steer us through troubled waters towards... Stop me. Stop me now. Stop me. Nope. Nope. I'm not gonna. Towards a bright horizon... (laughs) You, well, can, you can drive sing. this Titanic. Let her go, Johnny. Let her go. <laughs> you can drive this iceberg right into the Titanic. <laughs> I thought we were piloting the ship, not the iceberg. <laughs> not on this podcast. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Okay, people, thank you so much for listening. Head right to the Patreon page and give us your... Um, subscribe. And also, you know, drop us a like, <laughs> a like, rate, and review wherever you're listening. Thank you so much for doing so. We will be back next week, but something dark lies on the horizon. Whiskey will leave the show yet again. For a couple weeks. I'm going to the Philippines again. Again. I thought thought next time was the last time, but no. I I thought so too, but I was strong-armed into uh, reneging on my decision. Yes, yes he was. Unfortunate, but there it is. And thus, I will be looking for a new co-host. Someone with my looks. Someone with my charisma. Hell, I may just put a mirror next to me. (laughs) (laughs) I was gonna say, are we going to cloning technology now? (laughs) I may just put one of my dogs next to me. Right next to the microphone. (laughs) Yes, that is an Excellent point, Mr. Sniffy. (laughs) For goodness sake, just get Robert. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we'll we'll be getting some guests in here, and we'll be bringing you a little more information on some upcoming audio drama projects. The year is rolling on, and we are rolling with it. But until then... Rolling with the punches. Ow. Stop punching me. Ow, ow. Stop. Why why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> Thank you for listening, everyone. I am your friend Frosty. I'm your bartender, Mike Whiskey. This has been Bourbon on Ice, and as always, have, have a, a cold, cold one on us. us. So, yeah, seriously going back again. Yep. It's going to be fun. There's a fifth time around the corner, isn't there? And a sixth. And a seventh. Well, yeah. This is going to keep happening. <clears throat> it's going to keep happening. I will start sending out Indeed. <laughs> Co-host needed. <laughs> oh no, I'm in danger. All your wounds are self-inflicted. <laughs> this podcast was recorded and produced by podcasting duo Your Friend Frosty and Mike Whiskey. All music and sound credits go to soundstripe.com. Special thanks to you, our listeners, and Patreon subscribers. For more information on Bourbon on Ice, visit our social media page at twitter.com slash whiskeyfrosty or email us at whiskeyandfrosty at yahoo.com. For more listening options and a variety of podcasting entertainment, visit our hosts at buzzsprout.com.